let's answer this question once and for all. Is a product management career really worth starting in 2024? So in this video, I want to share my honest thoughts on whether product management is as viable, as lucrative, as in demand, as exciting of a career path that it was several years ago. I highly recommend watching two of my previous videos. One was about the pros and cons and reality of product management in a big tech company. And another one was about how you can choose between product management in big tech or versus a startup. So I think it was back in 2018 or 2019 where I personally feel like I started to see product management really blow up. Of course, product work has been around much before that, but for some reason, uh, that's when everyone else really started to find out about it. And I think there were many reasons for that, which I'll share. My first official product role was in 2018. I had done different types of product work in different capacities before that because I was building my own startups, but it was really around late 2018 where I joined as a product manager to like in a big tech company. So I suddenly was exposed to this whole new world that I didn't really know about. I thought people kind of just figured stuff out when they did product work. I didn't know how much knowledge and content and frameworks and resources there were around it. So I think it was then about 2020 where things like Lenny's newsletter really started to blow up. It was everywhere. And Lenny was doing such a great job interviewing uh, chief product officers and vice presidents of product, heads of product. And I feel like that, you know, was a, a small part of why suddenly product management was being put on this pedestal. TikTok channels and YouTube channels dedicated to product managers, dedicated to people working in tech companies, doing vlogs, that also really started to blow up. That also started to blow up for product design and engineering roles, was absolutely booming for product roles. I think at one point in 2021, I had done a, a LinkedIn search of all the product manager roles available at that time. And there were like more than 100,000 um, worldwide or something like that. Uh, it was absolutely mind, mind boggling, but it really felt like everyone and every company was hiring for a product manager and they were paying a lot for them as well. Of course, in 2020, we also saw the big tech boom happen, which we are now experiencing the impact of that decline. But it, yeah, it really felt like companies were investing so much into developing product and planning for growth and scale. So we saw the hiring of so many product roles, design roles, engineering roles, and a, a bunch of others as well, I'm sure. But I was really keeping my eyes on those three. And now let's fast forward to sometime in possibly late 2022 or 2023, where I feel like product started to get a bit of a bad rap. <laughs> so Airbnb announced that they were getting rid of the product manager role. And so many people who have a distaste for product management loved this. They were like, ah, oh, finally, one of the biggest, most renowned tech companies in the world is finally getting rid of product managers. This is what we have been waiting for. Hallelujah. But People didn't really read into the fine print. Like, yes, Airbnb got rid of the word product manager, but they essentially just moved the responsibilities of product work to other roles that already existed. You even had companies like Dovetail, which is a local Australian startup, follow a similar suit where they also rephrased or relabeled uh, their product roles and I think put them more into the hands of maybe designers or possibly even engineers, I'm not sure. But my point is they didn't get rid of product management, the roles, the responsibilities, the tasks, the collaboration, the influence, the strategy, that all remains. It is purely the labeling. I also feel like a lot of companies had said or like to say that they are product led, right? Product led growth also became a bit of a buzzword in the last few years, but not a lot of companies actually operate in a product led way very well. And I feel like that really started to show. And it's quite possible that a lot of the people who are vocal and like to talk about how much they don't like product managers or product management 
probably came from places where they didn't experience product being done right or product being done well. And then of course we have our friend ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. And I think that with every role, but including product management kind of raises the question of, is it going to take over? How is it going to change what product managers do? And that's just a whole other world that we are currently navigating. Now let's do a bit of an exercise where we forget about titles, labels, roles. Okay, let's just put all of that aside and pretend it doesn't exist. And let's purely think about what it is that a product manager actually does. What are the skills that you need? What are the responsibilities that you have? What are the tasks that you actually do on a daily, weekly, monthly level? I do have a whole video, by the way, on exactly what a product manager does in terms of strategic, operational and tactical work. So go and check that out if you want to know the details of how a product manager spends their time. And that will basically show you how versatile a product role is. So product managers do a variety of tasks and I cannot stress on the word variety enough. One of my best videos, in fact, are dedicated to going super into depth on everything that a product manager actually does. So check that out if you are interested, because I won't be going into the details of that here. But when you do go through that, you will realize the variety and the breadth of the things that you need to do as a product manager and that all of those things requires a different type of skill. Secondly, you do a lot of work with a lot of people. And I'm not just saying that to make it sound fancy. I'm saying it because you quite literally will work with product design, engineering, sales, product marketing. You might have interaction with security, with customer support, with other product teams, with business stakeholders and executives and sponsors of your product. Obviously, you will be talking to customers. In some cases, you might talk to external vendors and partners. You may even be talking to your legal team around terms and conditions, and the list really goes on. And my point here is every single discipline and person or cross collaborational interaction that you have requires a slightly different skill set or a slightly different way of working with, interacting, tailoring what you are doing to that role, that person, that discipline. Product roles can also vary a lot in terms of the industry and the domain that they are in. If you are a product manager working in a health tech startup, that's going to be very different to the knowledge and the domain understanding and context you might need if you are working in a financial services or a fintech startup versus that might be very different if you are working on an artificial intelligence product versus if you are working on an end user social media application. The list is endless because context and domain is so incredibly important. Product is product, but then understanding the industry and the environment and the market. Sometimes there are regulations and compliance and rules external to your product and your company that you need to understand. And that adds a whole other level of uh, skill set uh, and complexity that you have to go through when you do product work. Basically, what I'm trying to say is if you are a good product manager, you are most likely very well rounded. You might consider yourself a generalist, but I don't think we can put that label on every single product manager. It really depends. But you can ultimately wear many hats if we want to be cliche. And you essentially are just constantly solving problems. And solving problems is a whole other skill set and art and craft in itself. So putting aside labels once again, the work that you might do in this type of role, strategy, strategic thinking, project management, customer empathy, customer communication, cross-functional team collaboration, uh, pricing, monetization, business strategy, the list basically goes on. Now let's take step two in our exercise and imagine a world where product management doesn't exist, okay? The role is just gone. I don't know where it's gone, but it's completely eliminated from our career world. Let's just focus on the skills that we now have, okay? You've acquired a bunch of skills doing product work. The product manager role has now suddenly disappeared from society. What are you gonna do with yourself? That's really the question, right? That's really the whole point of this video is what if you get into a product management career path then it's no longer relevant. 
because of so many different factors, what are you going to do with yourself? And so you're kind of trying to decide today what the world might look like in the future to know if it's a good decision or not. So let's focus on the skills I've already talked about and let's ask ourselves the question, if a product manager role or the discipline no longer exists, are the skills that you have learned through doing various types of tactical and strategic product work still be useful? And will you be able to use those skills and that experience in other roles and in other industries? Think about that for a second, but let me tell you my opinion is absolutely 100% yes. And the reason for that is because product work is so versatile. It is so incredibly varied and it does not limit what you can do. It does not put you in a niche. It does not put you in a narrow pathway. And in fact, it opens up so many doors. You can go from product manager to startup founder. I actually did the opposite, which is also very common, but you can absolutely do that. You can go from product manager to some kind of operations role. You can go from product roles to project management. If you're not interested in making the actual product decisions, but you enjoy working with lots of different people, maybe doing a bit of coordination, project management is not going anywhere. You can potentially move from product to design or engineering. That might require a bit of upskilling on those technical skills for those roles. But if you have the product experience, you can absolutely move into more specific disciplines like design and engineering. And of course, you can move from product into any kind of leadership role. Even if you are looking after one product or one feature as a product manager, you simply cannot work by yourself. So in some ways, you always have a team that you are managing and looking after. And as you progress in your product career, you're going to get more and more experience with managing teams, growing teams, looking after multiple products. And that skill set and that experience can be translated to other types of leadership roles. Now, if you're thinking, is product management not worth pursuing in 2024 because ChatGPT is going to take it over? The short answer is no. And second answer is go and watch my video where I cover this topic in depth from my point of view. And of course, the role will evolve but we need to learn how to use these technologies to our advantage. Think about how we can use ChatGPT to do a lot of the grunt work for us so that we as the humans in charge and looking after the product can focus on the things that a machine cannot do. Things like strategic thinking, how we can drive the business forward. What is the product strategy? How can it enable the business strategy? Those sort of skills. Because titles and labels can absolutely change. The title of a product manager in 15 years time might change to something else because our friend ChatGPT can literally do 50% of the tactical work a product manager does. And maybe it can even design the product for us. It can write the product requirements and it can even code the product for us. But fundamentally, you still need a human being to figure out what the business should be doing, what is its strategy, how is it going to achieve that strategy. And strategy is simply not going anywhere. It is not going to be outsourced to machines and and you need people to be driving business outcomes. That's just not something we can quite simply offload to an algorithm, no matter how advanced it gets. And on the topic of outsourcing, this might be a little bit controversial, but I feel like there are certain roles in a business you can absolutely outsource, right? I'm not saying it's engineering. To some extent, you can also outsource product design. And can you outsource tactical product work? To some extent, yes. You can outsource tactical product work like uh, writing product specs, product requirements, doing market research. You can give that to our friend ChatGBT already. And maybe you can outsource that to another person external to your company. But ultimately, the strategy of everything and driving and moving that forward has to sit in the company because no one external to your company can really drive your company's mission and your company's outcomes forward. That requires someone internal to be doing that. And I think product roles play a huge part in doing so. Now, while I haven't black and white told you my view on whether you should or should not pursue product management in 2024, you're probably gathering that I am leaning more towards the yes, yes, you should. But before I give you my final answer, I do think it's important to talk about a few of the more practical considerations involved. The reality at the moment, it is very difficult to land a product role. 
and not just a product role. Firstly, right now in May 2024, it is incredibly difficult to land any kind of job, let alone the ideal product role that you might be looking for. The state of the tech market, the job market, and just the macroeconomic situation is making for things to be very difficult. So I do think that plays a small part in you deciding whether you should or shouldn't pursue product management. If you are trying and you have not had any luck, it doesn't mean that you should stop pursuing wanting to work in product. It just means you need to be a little bit more flexible and maybe a little bit more adaptable. So the advice I would give you is twofold. One, think about other roles that maybe won't stray you too far away from product world, um, like business analyst, maybe a data analyst. If you have some kind of design or engineering background, consider just doing that for a little bit longer until you know external circumstances are better for you to transition into product. But secondly, I would say it is harder than ever to differentiate yourself, especially for roles that are so in demand and especially when competition is at its absolute highest. I would really urge you to absolutely upskill yourself, but please don't go wasting your money and throwing yourself at courses because unfortunately courses, no matter how many you do, no matter how reputable they are, are just simply not enough to differentiate you. So if you have the ability to in any capacity, my number one tip for you would be to build shit. Just build what you can. And building doesn't mean you need to know how to code and you need to literally sit behind a computer and code a product. Building also means doing market research, looking for a problem. Maybe you can try and fill in a business model canvas. You can do some mock-ups in Figma. You can use some no-code tools if you absolutely want to hack something together. You can write a survey and post it to some startup Facebook group to do some market research. You can do competitor research by using our friend ChatGPT and coming up with some kind of uh, business plan that you could execute on. Like there are 101 ways. Maybe you can then document all of this in your own blog, post it, put that link in your resume. Put all of these experiences of you trialing things out on your resume. That is what will make you stand out. Basically, you're trying to give yourself some practical experience before you are able to actually work for someone in order to get that practical experience. You really need to try and take it into your own hands as much as you possibly can. And number two is compensation. Historically, uh, product roles have paid really well. I'm not completely up to date with where the market is at today, given, again, all these external uh, situations that we are facing. But I think relative to other industries and other roles, product management still pays very well, especially if you can work in a tech company that has some stock options that really adds even more onto your overall package that can be quite lucrative. But Whether you are getting into product purely because it pays well versus you actually really enjoy building stuff and solving problems, that's a personal decision for you to make. But of course, knowing that you are going into a path that does pay well is helpful. And while I am definitely not in the recruitment business by any means, I imagine tech compensation will continue to be quite well paying, even if it wasn't as well paying as maybe 2019 and 2020. So as we approach the end of this video, is it still worth getting into product management in 2024? My answer is absolutely, 100% it is. And a product role can lay such a strong foundation for you, no matter what it is that you want to do in your career, what role you want to do next. Because a product role will force you to have such a breadth of hard and soft skills that are so incredibly versatile. Like I said, a product manager role will never limit you and it will always open up more doors simply because of the variety of things you need to do in that role and purely the exposure and the collaboration you have with so many different types of people 
and different types of disciplines and also the different types of exposure you might have to different types of products, different industries, different markets. It is all building up to you really having a portfolio of skills and then you can do with that what you choose. But ultimately, it's still up to you to decide whether you think a product role is a good fit for you or not based on your interests, your skills, your career goals, and and what it is that you want to achieve and do in the future. But if this video helps you in any way to figure out if it is still a good time in the world to get into this career path, then I really do hope this was insightful and helpful. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, I really do appreciate it. Please leave any questions or comments you have down below. Let me know if you agree with me that it is absolutely still a great time to get into product and please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel because I have been growing quite fast lately and it is pushing me more than ever to continue producing valuable videos for you. So the support means a lot. And yeah, that is it. But I will see you in my next video coming out very shortly. Thanks and bye.